okay great so first let us see the history of oracle okay before we go to the history of oracle i would like you to uh, tell you about the origin of the database like how exactly database uh, has born oh is my voice is clear now can you hear me all still any problem with my voice okay good okay before we talk about the history of oracle i would like to tell you guys about the origination of the database like how exactly the database has come into the industry uh, in my previous session if someone someone has attended already i given pretty uh, good knowledge about what is rdbms and uh, and all so the people must be aware of uh, mr uh, cord uh, dr e f cord I talked about him in the last uh, session. Uh, he was the guy in 1970. He has written a lot of uh, seminal paper uh, talking about the uh, database and theory and concept. Okay, so based on his uh, theory, in the figure we can see that the, the several uh, distinct uh, like we can see lot of database here you can see popular database name like db2 oracle ingress uh, sybase sql server postgre so based on the doctor ef cord uh, theory uh, in ibm uh, they were working on a project called system r okay during system r project they have uh, in invented a new language called structured query language okay so using this and they IBM has their own database called DB2 so this is how in 1970s uh, during a project of system R SQL has born again the person behind the SQL was Dr. E.F. Cord okay he has proposed about 12 Cord rules uh, which every database has to follow in order to call themselves as a relational database so and uh, on the same time following his theory in the uh, what do you call um, at U University of uh, California at Berkeley? Uh, two scientists they have uh, created a database called Ingress. Okay, and Ingress data was uh, first created as a research project at uh, the university, and the original code was available at very uh, minimum cost under uh, one of the like uh, uh, license to lot of people. So in mid 1980s, Ingress, what he did is he has uh, uh, what he call spawned a number of commercial database application, including uh, Sybase and Microsoft SQL Server, and a uh, lot of things like he has come. And Post grew at that time it was known as Post Ingress. It's an open source database. So this is how the exact and Oracle he was supporting System R project. Uh, so he he took uh, the SQL uh, select uh, structure query language as well as he has followed some of the uh, concepts and assembly language programming and all from the uh, Un University of California Berkeley so that is how the Oracle has um, born okay so this is pretty brief overview about the origination of database I won't say my information could be 100% correct because I, I read some books and I read some websites and I'm telling you what I have learned uh, there is uh, all possibility that it is a history my data may not be 100% correct but I am telling you what I have come across uh, some of the reference site and books so any any questions on origination of database before we move forward yeah please go ahead Ramo okay this we are going to take up in the uh, history of oracle that is my next slide any other questions
okay in the last class also i have made a request and today also i would like to make a request you can call me sri i uh, uh, better than sir is you can call me sri all right <laughs> why so Uh, well, I am sharing my ideas, Ramo. I, mm, but it's up to you. Whatever you feel comfortable. I feel comfortable. You guys can call me Sri. But if you feel comfortable calling, sir, uh, that's uh, uh, okay. Uh, not a problem. Okay. So uh, one more thing I would like to tell you. Uh, in this class, uh, you may feel a little bored because I will be talking about uh, history at least half of the class. And but half of, after half of the class, you will have very interesting because I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to show you uh, practical select statements and all. And going forward in next sessions, they are going to be very interactive and they will be having very much information uh, about how we deal with the database in the real time. Uh, I just want to give you uh, the background of database so that you know you guys uh, mindset is uh, ready to accept whatever I'm going to talk in the coming sessions. All right. So let us see the uh, history of Oracle. This I have given pretty a very uh, brief uh, introduction about the history of uh, Oracle. You can go to many sites or any uh, books you can find more detailed than what I am I have given here okay Ramu you were asking who was the founder of uh, Oracle uh, well it's uh, Larry Legion uh, and his friends are the uh, founder and in the beginning 1977 as I was telling you like uh, they were supporting the uh, project uh, for IBM so Larry Legion and their friends they have founded a company called Software Development Laboratories okay this uh, company this was the first name you I can say of the Oracle okay and in 1978 Oracle version 1 was developed using assembly language okay and then later in 79 this uh, software development laboratory uh, was changed uh, its company name to the relational software incorporation okay and they have released Oracle version 2 well, there is a very interesting story about Oracle version 2. Actually, they got a client and they wanted to uh, sell their product. So, if nobody would be interested to buy uh, the version 1, right? Because this is the first version. So, they, they did little uh, changes and they called their uh, new version as a version 2. So, the client get more assurance, okay, already version 1 has been passed. Okay, and in early 1980s, to be specific, uh, somewhere in uh, June 1st, 1985, I think there is a typo in this uh, date, it should be 85, the RSA was renamed to Oracle System Corporation. Oh, sorry, it's, the date is correct. Uh, it, it happened in uh, early, uh, maybe somewhere in, uh, I'm, I'm not specific date somewhere in March 1983 uh, uh, the RSI was renamed to Oracle System Corporation and later somewhere in 1995 the Oracle System Corporation was renamed to Oracle Corporation actually they merged with Oracle Corporation and Oracle Corporation was uh, uh, a listed company in the uh, uh, what you call uh, share market so they, they have renamed the Oracle System Corporation to Oracle Corporation and during 1980s uh, they have uh, introduced uh, almost I can say version 3, version 4, version 5, version 6 okay these many versions they have released during the 1980s early and late and in 1990s uh, they have uh, introduced Oracle 7 and I have experience uh, from Oracle 7.3 onwards actually and uh, then in mid of 90s they have released Oracle 8 and in the uh, almost in the last of 90s they have introduced internet database uh, called Oracle database uh, 8i and then in 2000 they have released 9i and uh, in uh, 2003 
2003 they have introduced uh, they have released oracle database 10g and in 2007 uh, uh, 11g has come okay that was the release one now in the market you will be seeing that's uh, release 2 oracle 11g r2 you guys might be seeing r2 right r2 stand for um, release 2 so this is a fairly quick history of oracle any questions in this Okay, uh, Ramu 11i is, uh, see I am talking about Oracle database, uh, I 11i is towards Oracle applications, okay, so that is not, uh, I am going to cover in this uh, session, that is uh, out of the scope for this session. And G stands for grid computing basically and that is one of the fastest way to uh, C compute uh, the uh, data that's why from 10g onwards it has come okay so no more questions on history then let's go and see uh, what we have next uh, we have got next is evaluation of the database modeling uh, well from you guys must be aware like computer is is uh, in the industry for almost like 60 70 years and uh, this database concepts has been keep on changing like every time people are finding better way to organize the data and data is something which is very important for any business for example uh, we uh, in, like the business people they maintain their diaries they maintain a lot of books of account and they maintain list uh, customer information and all so similar way data is very very important for any business right so when the computer uh, computer has come the people uh, from the uh, almost for the last 50 years they are trying to simplify process of keeping their data very much organized and easy access so first thing they come up was uh, file system uh, file system i can give you a brief uh, i'm not going to take you very deep about these all things i can tell you a brief history file system is a uh, technique where they used to create simple text file, flat text file, and they used to maintain all the data there. So there was no logical uh, overlay structures. Okay, so th this was the file system. So they thought like file system is again we can have lot of problem. For example, data redundancy, data duplicacy, and uh, maintaining like sharing the data with uh, everyone. So they thought let's go for more organized and let's uh, uh, have more control on the data. So they went for a hierarchy, uh, hierarchical model where this is hierarchical the way we, the moment I say it, it must be giving you a, a picture of tree. Okay. So the, there will be one file, uh, there, there will be a lot of files, but uh, only one file will be the entry. It will be root from that root only you can go and fetch the data from other files so if you open any other file you, the data will not make sense to you unless until you have the root file so here again we got a problem saying that like uh, how uh, the data doesn't have any meaning uh, unless I have the root file so then they were uh, then uh, in 1970s they come up with the network model where they thought okay let's share our file across the network so uh, um, more than one person can work at a time uh, on the same file so they went for network model but again there was a lot of because the basic way of storing data was on fly, uh, file system so they had some problem then in 90s they they have come up with uh, the called relational so where the the rdbms has started what do you call taking more uh, what do you call um, domination in the market and it started getting popular okay so then that's how the relation has come and then they thought we can use the same relational like same tables in more uh, uh, what you call mature and more better way then sorry relation was come in 1980 and uh, this uh, what you call object based has come in uh, 1990s and then now what is the databases are called object relational database management system ORDBMS okay so this is like how the what you call history of databases uh, uh, 
uh, what you call it, uh, way of storing the data, techniques of the data storing uh, was there. So today, uh, more like databases, uh, they they call themselves as ORDAB, ORDBMS, like Oracle, sorry, Object Relational Database Management System. So any questions on this? Okay, if no questions on this, uh, let's move to our next slide uh, because Okay, Ramlu, you want to know uh, more about uh, hierarchical model, what exactly it was. Okay, no problem. Okay, let me explain in uh, other way. Uh, hierarchical, it's a branch leaf tree structure, okay, such as like child tables can only have single parent table, okay. A child table is completely dependent on the existence of parent table, okay. As a result, one to many relationship one to many relationship was supported but not many to many relationship for example one ch child uh, uh, what you call uh, uh, table will not have a relation with any other uh, table so that was the problem with uh, hierarchical model got it Okay, there is a question from Andres Doria. Uh, yes, does Oracle support or object relation? Yes, and uh, Jenny is asking XML support relations. Uh, sorry, Jenny, I I don't have insight about uh, your this. This uh, could be a very good question, but I I don't have answer for it right now. You can drop me an email on my personal email ID. You can see my email ID in the last of the presentation. You can drop me email ID. I'm. I will uh, love to get back to you on this question. Yeah. All right. Any more questions on this database modeling? I just want you guys to understand, like how the technology is changing and how the systems are changing so I wanted to give you a brief uh, uh, update on that okay that's all the history part okay now let's uh, get let's learn something uh, interesting i think that's why you guys all have come here to really see how the database and sql and all okay so okay Okay, Andres is asking in a uh, object oriented programming environment, uh, there is parent object to all object. This is assumed in object relational, I mean parent table. Okay. So you, okay, let, let me uh, think over it and let me answer you. Yeah, that 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 will be a good idea. Thanks, Andres. I guess OOP you mean object oriented programming, right? Uh, 
uh, use it in a OOP environment. Uh, OOP stands for Object Oriented Programming. Am I correct? My understanding is correct. Okay, good. Uh, actually, uh, something to tell you about Object Relational. You know, Object is Object and Relational. Uh, data modeling is almost contrary. Okay, so if we build too many objects in a relation database, uh, they 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 uh, result in serious impact on a general application performance. Okay, so uh, that that's what like uh, though we have that capability, I in real time uh, I didn't see we are using that much objects and uh, relations actually. That's my experience. Okay, but again, it can vary from type of project. I deal in most of the uh, what you call uh, financial projects, so maybe there this object uh, relational we we didn't use much. We have used objects, but very few. Uh, that's we have used during PLC programming and all. Okay, so let's uh, get to the SQL part. Okay. In my previous uh, session already I have given very good history about the SQL, uh, uh, how it came and all and the beginning also I talked and in that presentation also I talked about the capabilities but I thought once again let me take you guys to this who are new. Uh, what is SQL? SQL is a structured query language and this is the language invented to access the database. So this is a way how you talk to your database. Okay, for your understanding, you can just think this is a language used to talk to database. Using this language, you can manipulate your data. You can delete, like you you can do whatever you want to do with your data, basically. Okay, and one of the very common thing we would like to do with our data is we want to retrieve our database, in, like data. We want to see our data. Okay. We have stored our data, but we want to see the data. We want to see the data for many purposes. We want to see the data for reporting purpose. We want to see the data for analysis purpose. We want to see the data for many purpose. Okay. So when for that, one of the very popular command, actually I would say SQL, uh, most of like I can say about 80% of the time you will be using select a statement. Only 20% you will be dealing with some other uh, commands like insert, update, delete. But most of the time you will be dealing when you are calling yourself as a SQL professional, then you will be dealing with uh, select statement because you you will be using this statement for many purposes. As I said, analysis purpose, reporting purpose, and all. So let's understand what actually you can do using select statement. Okay. So the first thing you can do is you can uh, do a projection. What do you mean by projection? First, when you uh, you start writing your select statement, first thing you have to project. Project in the sense, you have to know which all columns you want to uh, see. Okay, that's what I have written. Like projection refers to the restriction of attribute. Okay, attribute are the actually uh, you should be calling attributes. Uh, columns are very generic term, but usually you can you can call it as an attribute. And uh, to the table we call it as relational relation, and uh, row we call as tuple. Okay. Well, I'll go with generic uh, word. So I will say uh, projection refers to the restriction of columns selected from a from a table. For example, you know, one table can have hundred columns, but we don't want to see all hundred columns. We want to see just one or two columns. Okay. So we do a projection. Okay. After that. Maybe we have got thousands, millions of uh, rows in our table information, but you may not be interested in all the information. So you will go for selection. You will specify some criteria to filter your data. So you will go for selection. Okay. And there is a possibility because uh, this is the uh, we we go for database normalization. So. We we have information in multiple tables, and uh, if you join those tables, that information will make sense. So you may join one or more than one table to pull your information. So that's what the join. So basically, the moment you hear this interview question, what are the capabilities of SQL statement? You will say it's projection selection joining or join. Okay, you can just say projection selection join are the capabilities of select statement. This could be a very good interview question actually. Okay, and this is so projection equal to select columns and selection 
Yes, your understanding is very good, Andres. All right. So, any questions on this capability? All right. So let's move to the basic SQL select statement. Okay. As I said, select statement is the beginning of the SQL command for querying data from database, table, view, or object. Objects are very similar to the tables. Uh, they are more complex. Like we will be seeing objects in maybe in our uh, seventh, eighth session when we get on PL SQL. Okay. But before I take you to the practical session of uh, using select statement I would like you to note certain things in your mind and as well as I want to make you aware with some of the best practices while writing a select statement okay uh, first thing we can remember is SQL statements are not case sensitive like any other programming language okay SQL statements can be entered on one or more lines okay so there is no restriction that it has to be on one line or it has to be on many lines and keyword cannot be abbreviated or split across line okay if you didn't understand this don't worry we will be seeing uh, about these things okay and se semicolon at the end of any statements uh, is recommended I would say it is must unless you are using some of uh, third party tools like Toad or SQL developer or uh, uh, you know a uh, Oracle uh, tool, GUI tool called SQL uh, developer sorry and uh, all round solutions also has one thing called uh, PL SQL developer okay but anyway so if you are using any third party tool or uh, enhanced uh, rich GUI graphic based uh, uh, tool for accessing database where you write SQL statement you may not want to have semicolon at the end of each select statement but when you are using the standard tool SQL plus then it is you have to use semicolon at the end of each statement and I would recommend you to use semicolon at end of each statement because in the real time you write lot of data patches you write lot of code which get deployed in the background process using SQL plus okay so maybe you are developing your code using some very good GUI or maybe some third party uh, tool like Toad or uh, uh, PL SQL developer uh, but when you give your code for the uh, build manager to run it may fail okay so always make sure you have the semicolon at the end of your select statement okay and now something I can tell you about the best practice while writing your select statement uh, there are clauses I'll tell you what are those clauses like clauses we have got group by order by where clause okay having so always preferred to put them on the separate line for readability purpose same thing goes with upper or lower case whether you want to uh, mix uh, the case or whether you want to go for all upper or you want to go for all lower okay it's up to you but stick to one particular standard or uh, try to know what is the standard your company is following for the uh, SQL or PL SQL programming okay and indenting are very uh, preferred because uh, it enhances the readability so when you are looking at very long or big code it's very easy for you to understand from where it's starting where it's um, ending okay so it, it get very easy for you to read indents are very helpful in that case okay so any questions on uh, this all right so let me show you the syntax of a select statement okay the syntax here you can see uh, basically lot of things you will see in a square bracket wherever we have square bracket it means they are optional not necessarily when you have when you are writing a select statement you should have but which are not in square bracket those things must be present as part of your select statement like here we can see select distinct unique in square bracket it means they are not uh, necessary but you can see column name is mandatory then again as alias is not mandatory from is mandatory table name is mandatory and after that all things like where group by having order by they are optional 
all right so now i am going to take you guys uh, through a practical session and in during that practical session i am trying to uh, show you uh, like the command to view all the columns of a table and the command to view one column of the table command to view multiple columns of a table okay and uh, we will be performing some arithmetic operations during we are uh, retrieving the data and as well as we will see how to eliminate the duplicate uh, rows like duplicate data and we will also see the concatenation of the columns uh, content during display if you don't get what is content uh, concatenation don't worry during our practical session uh, I, i'll show you all right and for this all practice i am using the oracle provided uh, schema called hr okay and this comes with uh, inbuilt with oracle 10 g and above at the time of installation it will prompt you whether you want to create this kind of this uh, databases schemas and you can say select yes and it it comes uh, with you packaged all right so before we get into our practical uh, session any questions which uh, i can address you sure andres in the meantime let me check my screen sharing uh, before in this clicked uh well this uh, this is a very good question andres mm, let me i i had i don't have any experience on mysql uh but maybe i think uh, what you are saying i can correlate and give you some confirmation in mysql you create database statement but when we talk schema in oracle can we assume that schema is just a new database in oracle engine well it's not exactly you can assume it's a database because in oracle uh, in database you have multiple schema okay and again in schema you can have uh, multiple objects okay so schema is nothing but collection of object like in mysql maybe you have one database and you have got tables stored procedures and you have got functions you have got triggers you have got uh, uh, sequences synonyms lot of things right in one database similar way in oracle database you can have multiple schema and each schema can have all those objects like table stored procedures functions triggers sequ uh, synonyms sequence okay so uh, this is what schema when i say schema in oracle I mean schema is nothing but collection of objects so in oracle database you can have multiple schema you can have any number of schema in one database you got some clarity did i answer your question andres good okay now let let's go to the practical session um uh, for showing you this practical session i am going to uh show you from 11g onwards uh oracle sql developer comes uh, inbuilt 
but you can always download that SQL developer from Oracle website. It's free of cost. Okay, uh, there is no additional license required than what you have already. But with 11G, it comes uh, packaged. So this is GUI-based uh, graphic, very good graphics. You know, very user-friendly, and it's a very good tool actually. Oracle has given. So I'm going to show. I'm going to execute my statements in this tool. And here it comes. It's launching. It will take few seconds to initialize, and then it will launch. But if you are typing something in the uh, chat window, I am sorry, I will not be able to see them because I have minimized that window. All right. So this is how it looks like, and I am trying to connect to my HR database. So it will prompt me the username, password. I am giving my password. Let's. Uh, oh, I think I gave a wrong password. No problem. Let me fix that. Okay. How to use this? How to configure this SQL Developer? Probably I can take another session, or on the Oracle website itself, you can find very good uh, a video about how to use this uh, tool. Okay. So yeah, it has connected. And I can drill down. I and as I was saying, you know, this is a schema, and it is collection of lot of objects. Like I can see your tables, views, indexes, packages, procedures, functions, triggers, sequences. Okay, lot of things are there in this uh, schema. So schema is nothing but collection of database. Okay, before I type something, let me see any questions are there. Now you can put your questions if you want to put. Okay, looks like you guys cannot. Oh, you can put the questions. Fine. Any questions? Okay, if there is no questions, let me go back to our uh, practical session. And the first question we have is: uh, first thing we want to see is select uh, command to view all columns of a table. All right. So let me write my select statement. Select. If I say all, then you can put is star, and I can say from my table is employee employees. Okay, and I can execute using this green button. I have clicked that and it's executing and it saying see first 50 rows in so and so milliseconds or seconds and here is our uh, output so this is the command we can write select star from table name all right so when you say star it means all the columns For, but let's see how many columns we have in this table so the, for that you can use a command called uh, describe and I am executing this this will show me okay these all columns we have employee ID first name last name email phone number hire date job ID salary commission percentage uh, manager ID department ID so these many columns we have and here we say select star from employee so it has listed all the columns and all the data all right so next command Let's see uh, how we go for a particular column. Suppose I want to see just first name, last name, phone number. Uh, I want to see. So I'll say select first underscore name is my column, comma last underscore name is my column, and we wanted to see the phone number, phone underscore number, comma. We wanted to see the salary from employee, employees. Okay. And I'm ex executing this. So here you can see. Now I can see only the columns which I have mentioned here are listed here. All right. So this is how we are going for a select command. We are using for specific column. All right. So in this case, I can say what all things are happening. In this case, we have projected that I want to see just 
this four columns okay so i have did a projection okay and these all columns got selected so i can say this is a, a selection as well okay but to be more specific when i put where clause that will suit the uh, criteria actually but for now you can understand this is a projection part we did it okay so in this we can just see the projection okay let me go back to our uh, session so that if any questions are waiting i can address them any questions okay looks like no questions so let me go back to our practical session and what all things are left we want to see just one column and we want to see multiple columns we have seen and we want to do some arithmetic operations and we want to okay right so let me come back here and i have already written this queries for saving our time so let me just i want to see the employee id from the table just one column so that's it let's see yeah it, it's just listing one column and you remember i was talking about the indenting and i was talking about the clause on the next line for readability so see you see select and then from or the on the next line so my uh, code looks good okay next thing we want to do some arithmetic operation in this case what i am trying to do is uh, i am trying to calculate the com okay let me bring this down okay this is my select statement here what i am trying to see is i am trying to see the employee id i am trying to see the first name last name and i want to see his salary and i want to see what is the commission percentage is there and in the last i want to see his total salary that is nothing but salary plus commission amount so how i can calculate the commission salary multiply by commission that percentage and i am adding it to that all right so this is what i'm nvl what is nvl i'll come to that in our later chapters for now you can just understand that i'm calculating the commission percentage value on the salary and then i'm adding to it okay so let me see yeah here we go so here you can see employee id first name last name his salary is 24000 as there is no commission defined for this guy so actually his salary is 24000 only let us come back down here we can see okay here you can see uh, his salary is 14000 and his commission is 0.4% so actually he total salary will be 14056 got it so this is a calculation part okay and this is a alias name i have given i have given the alias name i have given a name which doesn't exist in the table okay it's a alias name so that is what i have done here so that my uh, uh, table structure looks good so this is a arithmetic calculate operations i have done during the retrieval of the data okay now let me show you the next uh, next uh, uh, was like we wanted to hide the duplicate let me show you like this now if i say select job id from employee it will list all the job ids and you can see here this uh, what do you call accounts is appearing so many times right so i just want to see the only one occurrence of each job id so all i can do is i can just prefix distinct in front of my column and then it will list only distinct and now see how many rows are there 19 okay only 19 rows are there okay and you will not find any values repeating back here that is not the case when you take out the job id it is going to list all the columns and see it's showing me 50 rows okay so that's a very uh, good when you have lot of data uh, reoccurring in your table and you want to just see the distinct data then you can go for a, a keyword called distinct okay and now let me show you the concatenation okay so concaten concatenations are again very useful uh, here what i want to do is i want to uh, add first name and last name i don't want to see them in two different columns i want to see them in one column so i have just say first name this is the symbol double pipe symbol we use for concatenation okay so this is the double pipe symbol we use for concatenation and the last name and full name okay so and then salary and commission and again we had we have done the arithmetic operation also so let me show you the output 
yeah here we go oh here you see Stephen King there is no space now this is bad so let me try to add some space so I'm getting single quotation space single quotation again double pipe so now I'll get space between the names first name and last name and let me execute the query again so now you see Stephen space King all right so now I have only one column for the name but in previous case my first name was separate and last name was separate so I concatenated you can concatenate for many purpose for example you want to say my uh, Stephen uh, King works in XYZ department so you can just again you can concatenate and you can say department name etc so whatever you want to concatenate you can do and again I give an alias name so that my header part looks good okay there are uh, one more uh, thing uh, I want to talk about where clause but before we go to where clause I would like to take up questions with so far whatever we have done so let me stop sharing my screen we can come back to that yeah so any questions so far on select command are you guys are easy uh, following easy like easy to follow or any uh, thing I can change my voice pitch or something okay good so I think we all are clear yeah yes and this I, uh, I don't want to uh, put so much uh, uh, at this point because once you get some basics then definitely you come to my next sessions upcoming sessions you will find very good uh, tricks and techniques what we use in real time okay so there you will see something which you really don't get in any books and all but for now at least you should have basics because uh, at Viz IQ, you know, a lot of my experience is a lot of uh, new people, a lot of uh, freshers come for this kind of uh, what you call trainings. So I want to bring them to such a stage where they can understand uh, what what we uh, do in the real time. Okay, thank you, Ramu. All right. So I think uh, okay, I think we we are good with uh, to know how to view all the columns and we have seen how we can just if you want to see the one column it's okay we have seen how to uh, view multiple columns at a time and we did some arithmetic operation and we have eliminated duplicate data as well as we have seen how to concatenate the data the next thing I'm going to show you is how to apply filter filter is something when you are limiting your rows and when I say filter as Andy said it's selection it's the selection capability we are going to use of the select statement alright so let's see how we do that uh, in the syntax you can see here is one of the things is where and say condition okay so I'm today I'm just going to tell you about where condition these things will be uh, I'll be showing you in upcoming classes okay for today I'm just going to show you one example of where clause so let me share my screen back and let me show you what the command for that so what I'm trying to target is I, I have multiple department okay I have many departments let me see how many departments first of all I have I said select distinct of sorry distinct department underscore ID from employees is my table so see here I did not put semicolon but still it ran but in SQL star plus it won't okay so see I have got so many departments I have got about 12 different departments like 100, 30, 90, 20, 110 okay so my target is I want to see only those employee information uh, who are working in department 100 okay so I just want to see the their full name uh, their ID and I want to see the salary uh, so let me put my query here I am not interested in his commission part so yeah here see so here I have introduced something I have added to what we have seen so far I have added one more line saying where and then I am saying the column name and then I am saying the value okay if it is a numeric value no need to put in single quote if it is a, a worker value or date value then you have to put in the single quotation alright so 
let me execute and show you the data as you guys can remember we have got 50 rows in this whole table but now let's see how many rows are coming in just six because this six people are working under department id 100 let me put that concatenation space so that name look good because name was not looking good now yeah see nancy greenberg and daniel favit and john ken and all so this is what we are saying selection okay project projection uh, sorry a uh, join we will be seeing in upcoming session so i think that's all uh, today i have for this uh, sql select statement there are more uh, practical sessions on other topics but i think i'm done with the sql select statement for today so let me take out my share again and let's see what we have next so any questions so far Good purpose. So let's go to our next uh, thing. This is uh, we. I'm going to tell you about the table creation and how we manage table in the real time. T table is something very critical. Once you have created, like at the time of creation, we have to be very careful. And that's what uh, I, I'm a part of that group. I'm into database designing as well as I'm the part of uh, development I am a lead okay so whenever we say table creation it is not that easy but today what I am going to show you is very easy uh, I am not going to show you very complex table creation and why table created like that because again uh, designing is uh, like ER diagrams are in itself it's a very good topic and a big topic which even if I address you at this point you may not get it maybe I would like to take those session in the end of uh, my SQL, uh, SQL or after PL SQL I would like to take those kind of year uh, designing in the end of the whole session because you will have very good idea by that time already how the database look like and how the data is stored in the table and all okay so whenever we create a uh, table the very first thing we do is uh, we have uh, what you call uh, entity design okay we must complete the entity design okay and this is out of uh, scope for this session as i said and for each entity we must choose the table name and determine its structure when i say structure structure is nothing but columns okay and we have to know the uh, structure data types like whether it's a char or numeric or date or something like that okay and whenever we create a uh, table it's 11g not only 11g from 8i 9i 11g everywhere this some of the rules which i have given here you must follow okay the table name uh, and column name can be up to 30 character and must begin with a letter okay oops uh, is there any problem with anybody else who can, uh, no, not not able to hear my voice? If Parvez, it is only with you. Okay, fine, fine. Okay. Uh, whenever in the, in like uh, anybody is not able to hear my voice, and if everybody is hearing, then good idea is you refresh your page. Or you close and uh, re-log into the session, voice problem will be solved. That's what I, I have experienced on VisiQ. All right? Okay, good. So, whenever we create any table or column, the column name can be up to 30 character and must begin with a letter. Okay? You can have alphanumerical uh, name, but it has to start with a letter. Okay? And the name of the table and column cannot contain any blank spaces. Okay, for example, we want to create a table name employee information. So you cannot have employee space information. It has to be single word. So in that case, we use underscore or we just use, uh, yeah, underscore is the best way to write the table names. So that the, by the moment you look at the table name, you get a clear picture. Okay. The number and the underscore symbol and the number sign are allowed in the table name table column names okay each table owned by a user should have unique table name when i say user uh, and this again user and schema are same okay don't get confused for now but just you can think user and schema are the same okay so whenever i want to connect to hr schema actually my username is hr only 
okay so when i connect to hr it's as good as i have connected to the hr uh, whole uh, objects are accessible to me okay like uh, in sql or mysql i think you have a username different than database one user can have multiple databases right but here in oracle the username and schema name are the same so whenever you connect using that uh, username basically you connect to that schema all right and oracle g and whenever you are creating oracle 11g uh, reserve words such as select distinct char number and lot of other reserve words which you will be seeing during our practice and all they cannot be used for object name or table name or column name okay so this is something we will keep in mind and let's see uh, we'll see some practical session of creating a table so i i would like to show you the syntax of uh, create table it says create table and again here is schema schema you can see here is a schema uh, it's optional and then table name and then you give column and data type default value we will see later on during our constraint topic and then column data type again like this you can have any, uh, i think maximum column you can have in a table is 1000 columns this is the limit you have uh, for the table columns like in one table can contain maximum 1000 columns okay and uh, okay we will see these things in practical so any questions before we get into practical about uh, table creation and management So when I say management, actually management is something. Once you have created the table, you have created the ta table with your very good thought and very good database designers have developed it. But you know your business need are not the same throughout the life cycle of your project. Okay. See every day you now and day you see lot of business offer. Oh sorry, when you uh, uh, look at your mobile, every day there is a new plan. All right. Or you look at your banks, every day they offer some new uh, product, like they launch new products. So always there is a possibility that database refinement may also be required over a period. But once you have created the uh, table and you have already lot of data inside, so how do you do that? So that's why I say uh, we we do management over the uh, table. Okay. So let me uh, get back to our uh, my screen sharing and let's see what all things we will see today. Okay. So during this, I will show you how to create a table. Okay, there are two ways to create a table. One is create table and using the above syntax, or there is one more way, like you say create table as. As mean you are trying to duplicate the table. Okay, you want to create another table with as it is what or as it is like you have one already one table but different name. Maybe you want to copy the whole data as it is, or you don't want to copy the data. It's up to you. Okay, so this this one we will, I'll show you. Um, I don't want to confuse you with as uh, right now, but in the going forward sessions, we will be seeing because handy things. Uh, these are very handy for practice and all. Okay, so let me show you. Again, let me come back here. All right, and uh, I have already some queries ready with me. Okay, I want to create. Uh, let me hide this for not being. Okay, I have. I want to create a customer table. And I want to have okay about the data types. Uh, if you guys want to know a little bit about the data types, please go back to my profile. You can see my previous class. I have talked about the data type, their limitations, and how much they support, and what Varchar two care and all. So already I have talked about database uh, type uh, data types in my previous session. You can refer those things. For uh, for now, I just want to create a table called customer, and I want to have first name. I want to have last name. It's a worker to mean like character. I can have up to 50 character. I can have up to 30 character. And date of birth, like I want to have date type, and I want to have phone number as a number 10. So I can store only maximum 10 digit, and active flag whether my customer is active or not. So I'm using care of one. Okay. Why we use care and all? Uh, because I know always I'm going to have only one value. So prefer to use care. So let me execute this command and let's see what happens. Oh, okay. Sorry. Let me drop this table first because already I have this table. Looks like. Okay. So let me create this table. Yeah. See, table 
uh, create table succeeded. See, in previously it has given me a lot of error because already I had the table created during my uh, practice and I didn't drop uh, those tables uh, to have a fresh. So, you remember we can have only one uh, table, like the same uh, name cannot be the uh, same. Uh, one of the restrictions I was telling you here, uh, let me come back to the session. Let me go to previous slide. Here, each table own uh, each table owned by user should have a unique table name okay in this case i have connected to a user called hr and already customer table was there and again i was trying to get the same table it was not allowing me so that's what that error was telling me okay so now i have seen how to create a table okay now this table is created this is in use for a long time all of a sudden let's say i got a new uh, requirement saying that you know sri chandra uh, let's add one more column to this table we want to have address okay i'm not if anybody is already have an idea about normalization or all i'm not uh, i'm going against that normalization rule in this example but it should be okay for you guys to understand so let's say my my manager said sri chandra you know we are not capturing we are just having phone number we want to have their address also so that we can send them some greeting cards or we can send some our uh, prospectors in the going forward so he asked me to capture address information also into the same table so what i can do what i can do is i can go and i can say i have to change the table for changing a table i have to use a command called alter so i will go alter table and i'll give my table name and what i want to do i want to add what i want to add a new column called address and i want to give a size of 2000 so that's what it is and if i execute Okay, before this, let me show you the structure of table. In the previous slide also I showed right? this de describe uh, what is my table name? Customer is my table name. Customer is my table name. So see, I have got first name, last name, date of birth, phone number, active flag. So I have got these five columns. Now I'm going to alter the customer table and I'm going to add a new column and let's see what happens after that. So I have executed this and it's saying alter table customer succeeded okay it means successfully it could add a new column let me describe this table again you see we got one more uh, new column here address and whatever data type we have given all right so this is one requirement okay and again what happens is uh, my manager says uh, Sri Chandra you know in the initial design we wanted to have phone number uh, and only it, it is supporting num uh, what you call uh, a number it's true that phone number is always a number but if you look in the uh, real and he's saying we have a problem storing phone number what kind of problem we have a problem when we want to store a phone number with plus symbol plus nine one and then we give our uh, what you call and we have got international clients so their numbers are uh, different country codes and also we must have plus symbols and all so basically we want to change the data type of the column from number to worker so that we can store anything if you go in us and all they always love to write their phone number in split for example they want to have first three digit hyphen another three digit hyphen last four digit so in this case i would like to have my uh, column as worker data type so he asked me i said no problem we we, we can do that so let me modify and i said alter table customer modify and i said phone number and I said modify to worker 15 okay so I just execute this and let me go and describe this table again it's saying alter table customer succeeded and let me go and see here and you can see here the phone number has changed to worker 15 so now I can store the values which with plus 91 or hyphen or whatever okay now what happens is uh, if you look in this table there is a small problem with this table okay what is that problem I said create table customer okay this is singular but where has I'm going to have a multiple customer name so I realized it after uh, you know already this has been used after some days uh, some of very good English expert who has stressed oh you know your table name is okay but it will be good if you put it as a uh, pruller so what I can do is I can go for rename old table name to new table name and I just execute this and it says rename customer succeeded and let me try to describe this table again it should not because that name doesn't exist anymore what it's saying object customer doesn't exist so now 
the new table new name has come customers and let me describe this I can use a small form of describe or full also now see the same thing has come here okay fine I am done with this uh, now I don't need this table anymore uh, it's okay we, we have done this uh, session and all and I don't need this table so I want to get rid of this table so I can go for drop table table name so basically it's going to drop the table it's uh, okay here is the problem because customer table doesn't exist anyway it's saying table review doesn't exist because we have renamed to customers so now I have made it a spelling corrections and I'm dropping it it says drop table customer succeeded and now if I say describe that table doesn't exist all right but it could happen in real time that by mistakely you might drop the table okay by mistakely you have dropped the table so before 10g uh, retrieving the table back was very difficult for a developer they have to approach DBA and they have to do a lot of things uh, behind the scene to get you back but from 10g onwards they have made little easy for developer itself to flash back the table they can get their drop table back but it's saying before drop mean there is something called purge table I'll, I'll come back to that again so where this drop table will reside they will reside in a table it's a oracle provided table called recycle bin so let me see what let me see what we have in recycle bin we have got something different name we will not understand this name so something we got one object because we dropped it here okay so what I'm saying is flashback table customer to before drop but before that let me show you here describe customer this doesn't exist okay now I'm doing a flashback I'm doing a flashback and it's saying flashback table succeeded and let me re-describe this table see this table has come back so this is something from 10g onwards it's available flashback by mistakely you drop the table or you want to get back to your old table then you can use but if you say purge table you can never get your table back purge means permanently deleted so you will never get back okay it's it's okay you cannot execute this directly you have to execute drop first and then you have to execute purge table see that's what it's saying object not in the recycle bin let me query this recycle bin again nothing is there see nothing is there because we have already flashed back our table so let me put it back in recycle bin it is, this is very much like your windows when you delete it goes to recycle bin if you delete from recycle bin you're gone so for deleting from recycle bin you're using a command called purge let me query recycle bin again and here I can see that again and let me do this and this is purge table succeeded and now let me try to do flashback it will give error see object not in recycle bin okay so that is what uh, I mean by management on the table okay let me come back to our presentation uh, let me stop sharing this screen okay any any questions I can go back I can go back and share the screen again and I can re-query no problem For the explanation purpose, I took very simple table. I did not go for any complexity like constraint and all at this point. In our coming session, uh, definitely I will show you a lot of constraint and designing little techniques, not whole technique. Andres, yes, we actually, uh, this is a very good question. He's saying, uh, uh, Parvez, I'll come back to you again. Uh, okay, let me share it right away. So that, let, let's see. Okay. okay, he's asking, if I wish to add a customer ID to the table, is there a way to put that new column as the first one? Uh, you don't have to worry about whether it is in the first or last, because you remember, projection. In the projection, you can change your order anytime. So it doesn't matter how you store in your uh, database, whether it's in the first or last, it doesn't matter. You can always, in the real time, actually, 
whenever do us we, whenever we uh, do a select statement we always specify column names in the order we want we never trust default column order default column order is the way you add them okay if customer id am adding already my table is existing then it is going to sit in the last the it's a oracle uh, way to ma maintain it but in the real time we always go for a projection method okay we always specify the column names we don't go for select star okay and this did i answer your question is there a way to put that column at the first there is a way like you have to recreate your table actually that is a straight answer for you you cannot put it uh, directly in the first place there is no way you have to recreate the table or then it can be done okay pravees i have shared my screen you you tell me what do you want me to show you Parvez can you hear me Oh can you all guys hear me Okay uh, did i answer your uh, question Andres Okay good Parvez what do you want me to share on the screen like what do you want to see Okay, flashback command. Fine. Do you want me to re-explain flashback command? Oh, you were writing. Mm. Uh, anyway, this uh, video is uh, again. You can go back to this video after session is done, and you can see that screen. That's not a problem. Okay, if you just want to have the command for uh, you guys' easiness, let me put in here so that. it remains forever and easy for you to copy all right so i think we don't need to share screen now okay let me see what we have we have seen create table and uh, let we have seen alter and we have seen how to add a table we have seen modify we have seen oh drop column i didn't show you uh it's very like you don't need a column for example uh, then you can just say alter table table name and then drop column column name uh, and it's done it that column will be dropped this set unused and uh, you, uh, drop unused this i don't want to take up now this three are interrelated they may confuse you for now so i, I don't want to take them up now rename we have seen drop table we have seen purge table we have seen flashback we have seen so i think that's all i have for uh, yeah table management let me show you what's new in l1g any questions on table tables creation and management i know session is uh, getting little long. i thought i'll keep it for 1 uh, hour 15 minutes we are good on time so far we started 10 minutes late all right so a quick quick thing i can tell you about the l1g uh there are a lot of features has been uh, introduced in l1g more of the features are towards the performance of the database and towards they are very much beneficial to the dbas and uh, you know designers and all but for a developer i think uh, at this point for in this session the scope i want to tell you is what are things improved in l1g or introduced in l1g is first thing they have enhanced the password for example if you go 10g above like sorry below uh the username password was not case sensitive when you log into any uh, schema using username the password was not case, case sensitive from 11g onwards the password has become case sensitive okay and the faster simple sql operations the sql operations was definitely this has been improving in every release i would say you know because this is the uh, core thing uh, required uh, for the performance you know, because you query your database and same thing faster sql with caching of frequent used sql 
results so this is again getting onto like database architecture level so to enhance to give you faster sql uh, output so they cache the frequently sql statements at the server side and output so you get better faster uh, retrieval and they have a uh, fully automated sql tuning tips when you try to tune tune in the sense already have written a select statement and you may uh, get a question from lot of people saying that i have written this sql statement and it's running so long it's running for 1 hour it's running for 2 hours why you need to tune you need to write your select you need to rewrite your select statement so 11g is going to give you those kind of tips this is what wrong with your existing select statement this is what you can do so those things has been enhanced in this 11g and again performance analyzer and all and 11g this is all related to your tuning and all there is something called virtual column this is introduced in 11g this is very interesting i wish i could have shown you actually you know uh you remember in our select statement i went for arithmetic calculation you guys remember that arithmetic operation i did that column doesn't exist in the table but i did arithmetic operation and uh, the new column was added in our output okay so that particular arithmetic operation i could have defined at the time of table creation itself okay so that uh, next time onwards when i query i can just tell that column name instead i write my arithmetic operation each time so i can have a virtual column virtual column in the sense the data actually doesn't exist doesn't get stored in the database they are calculated at the time of retrieval okay so that is what the virtual column new features has been enhanced like introduced in 11g any questions on this uh, feature any any feature uh, you want to understand in detail it's not temporary uh, entries they exist with the table as a part of structure okay they will be part of structure but they don't hold any data in the database at the time of retrieval they calculate the value uh, uh, on the fly and they show you uh so we are added as a add column command yes ramu explain tuning transformation i think already we are getting late uh, this tuning uh, techniques we will be having uh, you know th th that's a very huge topic it's a very good topic i would say and once we are done with joins and all then i will i can demonstrate basically you know how the tuning and how exactly we can understand the techniques and all so i am not going to address your question in this session or i'm sorry about that okay so let's see what we have next question answers i think uh, we had it's it's a very good interaction good keep keep asking questions let's see what we have next okay this is something for you guys you have to answer me see i have been teaching you for almost one and a half hour <laughs> now you have to tell me at least what did i teach you did you understand or not okay so the first question is which of the following select statement displays a list of customers from a customers table okay oh sorry there there is a some typo i was thinking something i was like anyway you can think about employee okay so tell me tell me the answer can you all guys see the uh, screen okay and this said c what is c select first name last name from employees okay he said c parvez also said c ram also said c how about wish vishwa deepak am i right and jenny good vishwa any answers from your side okay uh, the answer is correct good very good what problem we have with other uh, three a a we have got is like we don't have anything we, we cannot have column name with space so that's a wrong and again we don't have any uh, column name called names 
that is also wrong and in the d we have a very small type of problem that is uh, the uh, what you call comma is there after the last name and after that we don't have any column name so that's a typo very good uh, second question which of the following is not a valid select statement okay Andy said C, Ramu said A, and Jenny, you said C. Okay. Parvez? C. Okay. We have got audience poll uh, as C, Ramu said A. Let me see. O, y, uh, A, and Y, C. Which of the following uh, is not a valid select statement? He said C. And uh, Ramu said A. We have got select last name, comma, first name from employees. This is valid. We have got select star from employees. This is also valid. C. We have got select first name, comma, last name. We don't have from. And then we have got table name. So this is invalid. Okay. Correct. Yeah. So C is the correct answer, Ramu. Okay, C C is the correct answer because we don't have from. Okay, third questions. Which of the following symbol is used for a column alias containing spaces? Oh, I I didn't uh, teach you, but any guess? Third answer is B. Jenny, okay. Any other, any other person guesses? No guesses? Fine. Uh, Jenny, it's a wrong answer. Actually, uh, let me tell you. Whenever we write a column alias, you remember like column names cannot have... Uh, no, A is also wrong. Okay. So, whenever you want to have a space in your alias name, for example, in my previous... Uh, let me show you the screen again. And let me show you here that this will be good practical. I can show you is here see here can you all guys see my screen can you all guys see my screen just type in the chat window if you can see my screen it looks like I can okay yeah good so let me show you here see I have given this is a alias name but there is no space so I don't have to worry about this okay if I just type space and let me try to execute this it will give me error. It's saying from key not found something. So whenever I give an alias name I and it has a space, then I'll give in double quotation. Okay. And let me show you the result. See here full space name has come. So that is the column alias name with space. Then it has to be in the double quote. So what is our answer here? I stop sharing. Answer is C. The answer is C. Okay. Alright, all right. let's go to, uh, we don't have so many questions, don't worry if anybody don't like to answer so many questions, but we, we have got very few questions and after that I think we are almost done, we have a, a little things more to follow. Okay, uh, which of the following symbol is used in select statement clause to display all columns from a table? Parvez said C, okay. 4th C, 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 very good. All has consistent and uh, it's good. Yeah, star. Star is used for uh, uh, the all columns to be shown. Okay. And fifth is when must a co comma be used in select clause of a query? Where must be? I think question is a little wrong, but I think you can answer these questions. Where we have to use the comma in select statement clause? Okay. D says when listing more than one field name and the field name aren't concatenated. Yes, that's a correct answer. Uh, Ramu, you answered C for which questions? Previous question or this questions? Okay, anyway, D is the correct answer. 
and this is this was the question related to our select statement let's see what we have for the create table we have got three more questions on create table okay uh, what which of the following is not a correct statement a a table can be modified only if doesn't contain any row of the data the maximum number of character in a table uh, is 30 you can add more than one column at a time to a table you cannot recover data contained in a table that has been truncated so which uh, statement is not correct okay th this is a very uh, good i think i can explain some more uh, topic on this yeah some more details which i have missed probably okay the answers are from andres he's saying okay sixth sixth is c says you can add more than one column at a time to a table uh, see the question is which of the following is not a correct statement okay c c c parvez said a and rest of them say okay let let me explain you one by one a is a table can be modify a table can be modified only if it doesn't contain any row of data the answer is uh, the statement is this this statement is correct so answer is not correct so parvez you are wrong uh, b the maximum number of character in a table name is 30 this is also true statement so anybody answered b no so that's why see you can add more than one column at a time to a table you can add more than one column at a time to a table this is also a correct statement okay uh, then d is you can't recover data contained in a table that has been in a table that has been truncated i think okay which of the following is not a correct statement d is also a correct statement <laughs> okay so i think i missed to put incorrect statement but it was a good brainstorm so all the statements are correct all right so question is wrong or i can see the uh, e option i forgot to put the wrong statement okay yeah question is wrong yeah you can say question is wrong no problem but it was a brainstorming okay which of the following command uh, changes a table names from old name to new name yeah this is very good question then uh, i explained on this tell me but we said a rename old to new is correct so answer is correct let's take it which of the following character can be used in a table name yeah this questions i want you guys to answer seventh is c jenny it's wrong seventh answer is a Hello, Mohammed. We are almost about to uh, uh, over this class, but anyway, you can watch this recorded session if you want. No problem. Seventh answer is A, correct. Eighth answer is A, Parvez, and uh, Jenny, Andres. All right. So, a lot of consensus we have on uh, consensus we have on A, and A is the correct answer. It's an underscore we can have in a table name. So, I think this was uh, a good exercise. I I believe basic. So, let's uh, summarize what we learned today. Uh, we have learned. Uh, we have seen the Oracle Corporation history, and we have seen how the database uh, for the over last 50 years how it has come to today's state and uh, we have seen select statement in detail and we have seen some practical session we have seen travel creation modification and we have seen the 11g features and we have done some exercise so i think with this i am done with today's session yeah and i i would before this any last questions you guys have and i really thank you for your patience and time and i hope you got some good knowledge in this and please leave your feedback and rating after this class so that you know your feedbacks especially helps me to design my upcoming sessions in a better way and i can take care of your feedbacks and suggestions okay and you can add me as your uh, friend or follower somewhere so that for upcoming classes 
or you share me your email uh, id so that i can invite you for my upcoming sessions so you don't miss them so i really thank you all thank you very much and please please don't forget to write your feedback and your suggestions all right and you can see my email id it's richandravai at gmail.com thank you thank you very much thank you all of you so any last questions okay you need 11g you can go to oracle uh, website you can find you can download oracle uh, software uh, if for uh, you can go for express edition i guess that that's what we can use uh, i don't know much about licensing issue you just go for oracle site ramu you will get it you just say oracle.com and go to download center your download option you will you'll get it it's very easy to download it will be at 1 gb something check out for express edition that will that will be good but if you have 10g whatever i have showed today you can practice on 10g also so you don't have to really worry about 11g from developer point of view there are very few things which has been introduced in 11g uh, there are some high concepts which are introduced in 11g and which will be out of a scope for our uh, sessions because like they talk about partitioning table and all so i don't want to uh, take those sessions they are pretty high level concepts maybe we'll talk about them in detail uh, at end of the session so any more questions before i sign off and anybody wants to uh, have a specific questions you they can always you can shoot me a email and don't forget to write like reference viz iq okay so that uh, it makes it's easy for me to answer you you are from hmm, it's a virtual class why do you want to know these all details i am from india all right everybody thank you all once again uh, thank you have a good day good night good evening bye take care